G'day guys and welcome to this business management lesson. In today's lesson we're looking at key knowledge point 315. That is unit 3, area of study 1, and the fifth key knowledge point for this area of study. Today specifically we're talking about management styles and helpfully the study design gives us a list of five different management styles that you need to know. However, pay attention to the fact that this key knowledge point uses the word including. There are other ways of classifying management styles, and there are other authors out there who have described management styles using different terminology. The use of that word, including, means that you are free to talk about management styles in whatever way you prefer. However, I would caution you that these five styles are the ones in the study design, so you, so you should prioritize using this language if you're comfortable doing so. Now, we've got to start at the basics. What is a management style? Well, quite simply, a management style is a manager's or a leader's way of doing their job, the way they relate to their employees, the way they make decisions, whether they take input or not. It's sort of the flavor of your manager. In different scenarios, different management styles might be more or less appropriate. Uh, a manager of one style might find it really easy to relate to their employees and win their employees' trust. A manager of another style might find it very difficult in some contexts to relate to their employees and win their employees' trust. Uh, that will be unpacked quite a bit more in the next key knowledge point. But for today, we'll just be focusing on introducing you to the five different management styles listed in the study design. There are two criteria that we can use to quickly determine which management style is which. The first is whether that management style uses centralized or decentralized decision making. Centralized decision making uh, can be seen here on the left by this little diagram. Uh, this diagram represents that this manager retains all authority and control over decision making. They make the decisions on their own. Whereas this diagram on the right I've made to sort of show that in this case, the manager is not the center of decision making. They might delegate some responsibility out to other employees. Perhaps those employees are um, enabled or equipped to make decisions on their own, or certainly in this decentralized model, the manager is quite happy to share that authority with their employees. So you've got centralized versus decentralized decision making. We can also talk about communication. If a manager speaks to their employees under them in a hierarchical model, we would refer to that as downward communication. If employees communicate up to their manager in a hierarchical model, that's upward communication. And if individuals are communicating on the same level, so in this model, the only ones who could communicate on the same level are the employees, but if there's communication between them, that would be lateral communication. If the model of um, structure, if the structural model of the management style is less hierarchical, if the manager is on the same level as the employees, there could be lateral communication between a manager and their employees. But looking for the direction of communication is one way to determine which management style you're looking at. Now let's apply these. So the five management styles listed in the study design are autocratic, persuasive, consultative, participative, and laissez-faire. That's French. It generally uh, translates as let do or just let it go. Uh, you can see from this little diagram that I've whacked on your screen that if we lay these out on a continuum, the autocratic management style, the manager has the most control, and the laissez-faire management style, the manager has the least control. But we'll talk about that more in a second. An autocratic management style is defined by the manager using centralized decision-making. The manager retains complete control for all decisions to be made. And the employees are only told what to do. There is one way downward, top down communication. Um, employees are not empowered to give feedback. Employees are not asked for their input. The manager forms their own, uses their own opinion and their own expertise to make decisions and tells the employees what to do. Elon Musk is an example of a um, well-known autocratic manager. He likes to engage himself in the business going on in, uh, or, or the work that's going on in his different businesses. 
Um, reviews from some of his past employees that get reported in the press describe him uh, as a bit of a pest. He gets involved and doesn't necessarily know what he's doing, but he tells people what to do, shoots from the hip a bit. Um, but also, he is the CEO of several successful businesses, so perhaps it works for him. The next management style is persuasive management. This can be a little bit difficult to um, differentiate from autocratic if you're just looking at a case study to determine whether or not a manager is being autocratic or persuasive, but there's one key distinction. They both use centralized decision-making. The manager retains complete control for decision-making. However, when it comes to the communication, it's still only one way down with top-down communication. However, instead of just giving orders, a persuasive manager will try and explain to the employees why they should do what they're being told to do. An autocratic manager might tell you to sit down and shut up. A persuasive manager might tell you, sit down and shut up because I'm about to say something important and I want you listening. Politicians tend to be pretty good at this style of management. They get in front of a TV camera and they tell you what the changes in legislation are and how this is going to be good for the economy or for our society. Um, but generally speaking, I can't remember the last time you or I were directly asked for our opinion about the way the country should be run. Probably for the best. I don't think I should have that job. Now, a consultative manager. The name gives it away a little bit. While this manager still uses a, de a centralized decision-making model, they consult with their employees first. This is our first management style we've looked at where there's two-way communication. A manager will ask for the opinions or suggestions from their employees and gather that feedback and then use that feedback to make an informed decision. Of course, the manager's still making the decision. He's asking for feedback or input, but the employees haven't been authorized or empowered to make those decisions themselves. So this is consultative management. Perhaps your teacher might ask you um, which... Uh, which case study your class might like to use and your class can have a vote uh, or your class could express a preference. But if your teacher retains authority for making that decision, your teacher is exercising consultative management in that moment. Uh, a friend of mine, Michael Wentworth Bell, is a very effective consultative manager. He left uni where he studied 3D animation and design and started his own company, Digital Load, uh, who create uh, video games in virtual reality, and they've been incredibly successful. And when Digital Load got started, Mike was the only programmer and designer there. Over the years, he's had to grow his team and hire more and more staff. I was speaking to him just the other day, and he was telling me that these days he does almost no game design himself. Uh, he's, he's very busy managing his team. Uh, and he was very happy to confess to me that he's hired people who he trusts completely to be able to do what they need to do. Uh, but he's very responsible for ensuring that the teams are all on the same page. And he's very capable of setting deadlines and um, holding people to account. A participative manager is part of the team. This is the first management style where we're exercising decentralized decision making and we're no longer using that sort of managers at the top, employees at the bottom hierarchical model. Instead, the manager is on the same level as the team. They're participating in the work as part of the team. So the team is empowered to make decisions. The manager is responsible for ensuring those decisions are made, uh, but the manager is very much part of the team. Because the manager is on the same level, as the team, there's no more hierarchy. We would describe communication in this model as lateral communication. A good example of this would be in a footy team. There's a captain, there's a vice captain even. Uh, but when they're out there on game day, the captain is not telling people how to kick. They're not telling someone that they need to do a handball to someone else. They're not telling their players if they can or cannot kick a goal. It's very much a team exercise. The captain has responsibility for the team. The captain would have some duties. 
that would be, um, they'd be in a position of authority to manage the team in some ways. But on game day, when they show up to do their jobs, their captain can speak for the team, but the captain certainly, uh, it's a very decentralized model. Each player is empowered to make decisions for themselves about what's best going to help this team achieve its objectives of winning a game. And finally, the fifth management style, laissez-faire. Once again, French for let it go or let do. The manager gives all authority and full responsibility for operations to their employees. Um, I really like this cartoon. It's a funny one. Uh, but in this model, the manager is only involved if the employees ask them to get involved or maybe is involved in an administrative capacity um, to set certain parameters like budgets or deadlines. Um, certainly, there'd be very little communication. Uh, if there is any communication, it's absolutely lateral and two-way, um, but a manager might not even speak to their employees for significant periods of time. These employees are completely authorized and empowered to be making their own decisions. In the case of Steve Jobs, he was very much a laissez-faire manager. He would give them instructions and then go away and trust them that they would work out how to do whatever it was that they'd been set. So uh, there are stories from the development of the iPhone that he would tell his designers that he wanted a user interfa interface for the phones and to come back to him when they had one. Uh, and they'd propose it, and I suppose at that point, perhaps the management style changed a bit. He was also very exacting and particular about what he wanted, but in terms of letting people just do their jobs, he kept kept out of their way. So, in summary, for this key knowledge point, it's a nice simple one. There are five different flavors of manager. We call these management styles. The five styles listed in the study design are autocratic, persuasive, consultative, participative, and laissez-faire management. And those go from the most restrictive, where the manager retains all of the control and the employees have no authority or responsibility at all, to quite the opposite. Laissez-faire, where the employees are completely empowered and authorized and trusted to make decisions and go about business in whatever way they think is appropriate. And the manager is just there to help empower them and give them whatever they need to get their jobs done. That's all for today. See you next time.